Okay. Now, uh, we will discuss the what is the direct and indirect reduction in blast furnace, it is very important and the carbon decarbonment and the CO gas utilization and as we will see the direct and indirect reduction, a combination of this has a great role to play on the carbon efficiency as well as CO utilization. Now, what is direct reduction and indirect reduction in blast furnace? Now, first start with the direct reduction. DR I am representing. The direct reduction is only written in this form FeO plus C forming Fe plus CO. That is the carbon is directly reacting with the FeO forming iron and carbon monoxide, right. So, this is called direct reduction. Why it is called? Because here basically you can see the carbon is directly reacting, reacting with the FeO. And basically, if you is a solid, carbon is a solid, the solid solid reaction does not continue for a long time. As soon as the contact between these two solid particle diminishes, the reaction stops. So, basically this reaction although it looks like two solid solid reaction, but actually it takes place by gaseous intermediates like CO and CO2. So, this reaction is basically a combination of two other reaction. One is that FeO plus C, first FeO react with the carbon monoxide forming Fe and CO2 and then what about the CO2 that is generated that gasify the carbon to carbon monoxide and that carbon monoxide is again used there. So, basically, so what happens is that what about the CO2 that is generated that comes here and what about the CO that is generated here that used here. So, this is the way the reaction continues. So, this is the way the reaction continues. So, basically this reaction although it looks like a solid solid reaction, basically it is a combination of two reaction. One is that FeO plus CO forming Fe plus CO2 and the CO2 produced by the reduction of FeO is used up to gasify the carbon to CO. So, it is an in situ generation of CO by carbon gasification. And this CO is then used for reduction of FeO to Fe. So, it is a combination of this two reaction. And then what is called an indirect reduction, let us see. So, indirect reduction, indirect reduction you can write like this Fe2O3 plus CO forming Fe3O4 plus CO2, and again Fe3O4 plus CO forming FeO plus CO plus CO2. This thing basically equilibrium reaction we have written. And just now we have discussed, but you can find here all the reaction are taking place by CO and carbon is not directly participating in this reaction. That means in other way you can say that is the CO is not generated by in situ carbon gasification reaction. Okay. So, why it is not? Because in the blast furnace, in the upper part of the furnace where the temperature is less than 900 degree centigrade this carbon gasification reaction, this carbon gasification, this is the carbon gasification reaction, this carbon gasification reaction does not take place. This reaction only take place at high temperature. So, temperature greater than, this is temperature greater than 900 degree centigrade is required for this reaction to take place. So, in the blast furnace, apart in the blast furnace where the temperature is less than 900 degree centigrade, although carbon is present and the from reduction CO2 is also evolving, but CO2 cannot gasify the carbon in upper part of the furnace. As a result, you do not have any in situ CO generation and so the carbon do not directly participate into the reaction. Where the temperature is high, this reaction takes place, so carbon is directly participating in this reaction. In this case, carbon is not directly participating. Here, how the what is the source of carbon? That is the lower part of the furnace that is the CO is generated in the lower part that CO you have to supply for this reaction. Somehow you have to supply the CO for this reaction then this reaction will continue. Okay, that is why this reaction this is called the indirect reduction. So, carbon is not directly participating. So, basically that is the thing and then what you can say up in the blast furnace where the temperature is less than 900 in situ CO generation by carbon gasification not possible and wood reduction is sustained by CO generated in the lower part of the furnace. Okay. So, that is called the indirect reduction and in the, in, the, in the upper part in the lower part of the furnace basically carbon directly participate into the uh, reduction process by in situ generation of CO. So, it is called the direct reduction that is the thing. 
So, direct reduction basically you can say that so endothermic direct reduction is endothermic because of carbon gasification reaction CO2 plus C forming twice CO it is highly endothermic it is endothermic and take place in the lower part of the blast furnace. In the lower part of the blast furnace where the temperature is greater than 900 degree centigrade in situ CO generation take place and then that reaction is called the direct reduction because carbon is directly participating. In the upper part of the furnace that is the indirect reduction take place and which are exothermic but and take place in the upper part sorry it is it is it is basically in the upper part of the furnace not lower it should be this is it happens in the upper part upper part of the blast furnace not not the uh, lower part of the blast furnace ok. So, then so direct reduction is endothermic but economic in carbon you can find this direct reduction is economic in carbon because 1 gram mole of carbon or 1 kg mole of carbon can produce can reduce can take out 1 kg mole of iron there is a kg atom of iron or you can say 1 1 mole of carbon can take out the 1 mole of or oxygen right. So, it is thin, but in this case in case of indirect reduction specially if you consider the FeO plus 3 CO forming Fe. So, here you can find to remove 1 gram atom of oxygen from the ore you require 3.3 times of CO that means 3.3 gram atom of carbon. So, that is why the indirect reduction is uh, very expensive in carbon. So, if we can that is the FeO. So, if we can combine the direct and indirect reduction possibly we can further make it economic. I will come to later on in case of the blast furnace I will see. So, blast furnace as a counter current gas solid reactor you can find that in the blast furnace here is the CO gas is produced at the bottom and then this CO gas this CO moves upward this is the CO moves upward and what he finds? It finds that the iron oxide the first iron oxide the CO gas encounter is the AFU. And then when it moves up it will encounter Fe 3 O 4 and the top Fe 2 O 3. And as I say this reduction potential or the or that is the oxidation potential of Fe 2 O 3 is highest it is least stable and then this and then this. So, it is the most stable and this is the least stable and uh, because of that because of higher oxidation potential as I said also as the CO gas moves us basically as the blast furnace gas moves us is oxidation potential decreases and here because Fe 2 3 that is oxidation potential that is all the reduction potential of the blast furnace gas uh, is sufficient to reduce the Fe 2 3 to Fe 3 4 and here also Fe 3 4 to Fe and here where the reduction potential of gas is high then only Fe 2 Fe is possible that is one thing. So, this is the sequence and you can find that uh, Fe will be reduced first and this this is the temperature in this part in this part of this furnace temperature is also higher. So, here both the direct and indirect reduction can take place in this part shown only in indirect reduction will take place. So, if you can undergo both the direct and indirect reduction right ok. So, now you can see the how much of oxygen Fe 2 O 3. So, if you say Fe 2 O 3 how much oxygen Fe 2 O 3 contains per ton of iron it is around 429 kg ok and Fe 3 O 4 that is the Fe 3 O 4 per ton of iron it contains around 381 kg of oxygen. And the oxygen with the Wustide, Wustide why it is called Fe is also called the Wustide because it is non stoichiometric it is deficient in iron or you can say it is little surplus in oxygen because for 1 gram atom of iron you have 1.06 gram atom of oxygen in the Wustide ok. So, if you consider that that way the Wustide contained around 302 kg of oxygen. So, if you want to go from Fe 2 O 3 to Fe 3 O 4 you have to remove around 48 kg of oxygen and when you want to go from Fe 3 O 4 to Wustide then you have to remove around 79 kg of oxygen right. And you can find from Fe O that is the Wustide to iron then basically you have to remove the 302 kg. So, maximum amount of oxygen is associated with the Wustite and the Wustite reduction can take place both by the direct and indirect reduction. So, that I is telling that is the it can undergo because at this temperature where you can find the Wustite in this temperature 
whose state can undergo both the direct and indirect reduction. So, what happens is that if we can since we so we can carry out a part of the oustite oxygen we can remove by direct reduction. What happens the whatever the CO that will be generated that can be used up to take out the rest of the oustite oxygen by indirect reduction ok. Then your carbon efficiency will be further higher up. So, we have seen that is the direct reduction is very economic in carbon, but if you combine the direct and indirect reduction or you can partition the removable oxygen of the oustite between direct and indirect reduction we can further economize the carbon consumption that will come. And, and carbon consumption as well as CO gas utilization this is also a very important factor that is the how much CO that is the CO generated in the blast furnace how we can utilize and how you can index it it is called the percentage CO utilization and it is defined by there is the percentage of CO2 by percentage of CO plus CO2 that is how much what is the fraction of the CO you can convert to the CO2 that is the utilization of CO. So, now there is the optimum partitioning of removable oustite oxygen between direct and indirect reduction for maximum carbon and CO efficiency very good. Now, let us consider that is the y kg of what you are considering there is the y kg of oustite oxygen I want to remove by direct reduction and then rest 300 minus 302 minus y kg I of oustite oxygen I want to remove by indirect reduction and we will do in such a way such that the CO generated by the direct reduction is just equal to the CO required for the indirect reduction. If I do that that is the maximum efficiency condition ok. So, now what is the direct and indirect reduction as I said the direct reduction is FeO plus C forming Fe plus CO2 and indirect reduction as you know equilibrium reaction is given by this right. And now, so if we consider how much, so if your uh, Y kg of oustite oxygen is removed directly ok, Y kg means Y by 16 kg mole of oxygen is removed directly then how much the CO will be produced because one mole of to remove the one mole of oxygen I produced one mole of CO by direct reduction. So, y by 16 basically you will generate y by 16 kg mole of uh, CO ok. So, kg mole of CO produced by direct reduction is y by 16 and uh, how much will be the CO required for indirect reduction. Now, by indirect reduction I am removing 302 minus y kg or 302 minus y by 16 kg mole of oxygen and as I have seen from the as you can see from the indirect reduction if you want to remove the 1 kg mole of oxygen from the oustite you require 3.3 kg mole of CO or 3.3 kg mole of uh, carbon anyway. So, how much? So, basically so, next is the kg mole of CO required by indirect reduction is simply y minus uh, 302 minus y by 16 into 3.3. Now, under the optimum condition if this is this two quantities are equal y by 16 is equal to 302 minus y by 16 into 3.3 then that is the maximum utilization condition that is the maximum CO utilization condition ok. So, if I do that this thing then what I get y, why I get 232 kg. So, 232 kg is basically uh, 54 percent of 429, 429 is the total uh, oxygen contained into the Fe2O3 per ton of iron produced right. So, that, that is the 429 is the total removable oxygen of the iron oxide and out of which 232 kg you are removing by directly direct reduction. Okay, so, 54 percent you are doing the direct reduction right. So, then this optimum condition come. Now, let us see from there that is the what is the efficiency CO efficiency how it is the carbon consumption uh, this parameter we can calculate and we will go into the next slide. So, it is continuing that is the optimum partitioning. Now, total ore oxygen to be removed by indirect reduction how much oxygen is remaining after direct reduction by direct reduction you have removed 232 kg. So, remaining is 429 minus 232 kg. So, and total that is 197 kg or uh, 197 by 16 that is 12.3 kg mole of oxygen to be removed by indirect reduction. And if you remove this much of oxygen how much CO2 will be generated basically by indirect reduction one mole of 
basically your uh, one mole of if you want to remove the one mole of oxygen indirectly your CO2 produced will be simply uh, how much that is the one mole because the indirect reduction you can write like this there is a CO plus half O2 basically half O2 means this is the more oxygen it will form CO2. So, you can say so one mole of basically yeah right. So, this is basically one gram atom if I want to remove the one gram atom of ore oxygen this is the ore oxygen ore oxygen ore oxygen right. So, this is the ore oxygen right. So, if I want to remove that is the one gram atom of ore oxygen I can produce one gram mole of CO2. So, if I remove this much kg mole of uh, ore oxygen I will produce this much kg mole of CO2 right. So, simply I will produce uh, this much kg mole that is the kg mole of CO2 produced will be 12.3. Now, this is the thing that is the how much uh, CO2 produced I have just generated. Next let us see how much that is the CO will be produced. This is the CO2 that is produced and uh, what is the CO produced by direct reduction that we have seen the direct reduction y by 16 or you can say 302 minus y by 16 that is the CO produced. So, basically y by 16 y is that 232 by 16 that is the 14.5 this is the kg mole of ox, uh, CO that is produced by direct reduction right. Now, then efficiency you can simply calculate you have produced basically 12.3 kg mole of CO2 and out of 14.5 kg mole of CO that was initially there the direct reduction. The direct reduction you generated CO and out of which 12.3 that is the uh, CO you uh, that is the CO2 you have produced from uh, that is the after direct reduction you do the indirect reduction of the rest of the oustite oxygen as well as you carry a take out the oxygen from the higher oxide like Fe 3 O 4 Fe 2 O 3. The total uh, you have removed uh, 12.3 kg mole of ore oxygen indirectly and you have produced 12.3 kg mole of CO 2 and it has come from 14.5 kg mole of CO that has been generated by direct reduction. So, your efficiency is 12.3 by 14.5 into 100 that is 85 percent. So, you can find that efficiency has gone CO efficiency has gone to 85 percent while only if you want to reduce the FEO okay, indirectly 100 percent indirect reduction it efficiency only 30 percent. So, now if you combine a direct and indirect reduction in the oustite iron okay, and also you can carry out and the rest of the higher oxide oxygen by whatever the left out uh, CO from the FU reduction, FU indirect reduction, okay, then your efficiency can go up 85 percent. The two things is there you have to optimize direct and indirect reduction. Another thing as the gas is moving up, okay, because after FU reduction indirectly also you have lot of CO gas is available because that has to go. So, if the furnace stopped at FU, then your efficiency how much it could have been much less okay then we can calculate how much is that because with this if you if you if you had only a few if you after this partitioning that is uh, your then co2 produce could have been your 302 i'll say minus 232 by 16 by 16 if you do that how much it is coming so just do a simple calculation and it will tell that is your how much it is 302 minus 232 is equal to this this divided by 16 it gives you 4 point you are getting here 4.375 and then your eta 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 co it could have been only how much that is 4.375 divided by 14.5 30 percent. So, you cannot do anything. So, you can find that is the if if you only if you remove the if you oxygen it will be only 30 percent, but if you that is the whatever the CO since oxygen that is the blast furnace is a counter kind gas solid reactor that is whatever is the left out CO from the 
a few reduction indirect reduction what are left over that can take out the oxygen okay, from the higher oxide. So, if you do that then basically you can do a very nice job that is 85 percent efficiency you can get. Now, you can see the what is the carbon requirement carbon requirement will be actually 14.37 right what is this at 37 is 14 point 5 basically it is 230 because if you take 230 I think that is why that is the um, it is uh, it is around multiplied by 12 if you do 172 kg that is the 172 kg carbon requirement because your CO produced by direct reduction is 14.5 ok. So, here it is slight mistake is there this is 0.5 14.5 multiplied by 12 is this thing. So, you get that so 172 kg that is the carbon requirement because now CO that will remove and uh, now let us check that is the CO that will move up after the indirect reduction of boostide how much will be there how much CO will move up that is very important that is 14.37 because this, this was the that is the CO generated by direct reduction of boostide and out of which 70 percent 30 percent will be utilized for the indirect reduction of the boostide and 70 percent that is the 70 percent will move off what about this. So, 70 percent at 10.06 kg mole of CO that will move off after the indirect reduction of ustite ok. And then this will take out how much of oxygen and then let, let us go there and then there is a CO required for higher oxide reduction if I want to do it. Now, then let us see the how much is required. So, it will be 80 by 16 because 80, uh, 80 kg of oxygen is associated with the Fe 3 O 4. So, or 80 by 16 kg mole of uh, oxygen is associated with the Fe 2 uh, Fe 3 O 4. And uh, if you want to remove this much of uh, Fe 3 O 4 oxygen indirectly you require this into 1.25 because of equilibrium requirement right. Plus from hematite that is the Fe 2 O 3 you have 48 kg of oxygen or 48 by 16 kg mole of oxygen with the Fe 2 O 3. And uh, if you want to uh, then the CO requirement is simply like that because the equilibrium requirement for the Fe 2 O 3 reduction is 0 almost 0. So, you, this thing. So, this is the total CO required for uh, 9.25 uh, that is the kg mole of CO is required to indirectly take out the 80 kg from Fe 3 O 4 and 48 kg of oxygen from Fe 2 O 3. And the CO that is moving up after the indirect reduction of ustide is 10.6 which is greater than this. So, that can easily satisfy or uh, carry out the rest of the reduction when the gas is moving up in the blast furnace ok. Let us see now, now I have calculated basically for percentage for different uh, indirect reduction for different indirect reduction say your uh, 0 percent, 20 percent, 40 percent, 46 percent, 60, 80, 100 ok. If I just uh, increase the indirect reduction like this and direct reduction I reduce from 100, 80, 60, 54, 40, 20 and 0. Now, 54, 46 percent is the optimum condition that I say direct and indirect reduction. Now, I have calculated everything. Now, the stepwise calculation is there that is more oxygen to be removed directly that is the kg mole of oxygen that is removed to be directly then ustide oxygen removed by direct reduction ok. Uh, there is the ore oxygen to be removed directly means that is the total ore oxygen that has to be there and total uh, ore oxygen to be removed directly in kg mole I have given also and now the ustide oxygen to be removed directly I have given also and then ustide oxygen to be removed by direct reduction in kg mole I have given. These are the, the, the similarly CO generated by direct reduction in kg mole ustide of oxygen removed by indirect reduction in kg in kg mole and then the CO required for indirect reduction CO required to be generated externally ok. Because uh, if you are deficient in uh, CO after the direct reduction it happens when the direct reduction is less than 54 percent. If the direct reduction is less than 54 percent then whatever the CO generated by uh, direct reduction that will not be sufficient to carry out the rest of the uh, indirect reduction. Then you have to externally supply some amount of CO that is the you have to externally burn some carbon that is why I have said what is the 
CO decay to be generated externally. So, only in the cases when the direct reduction is less than 54 percent and when the direct reduction above 44, 54 percent, the in that case, uh, in that case you do not require any uh, CO not required to be generated externally because direct reduction 54 whatever the CO generated is just sufficient to take out the rest of the Wistide oxygen by indirect reduction. So, your direct reduction percentage become more 60 percent direct reduction obviously, the CO generated by direct reduction will exceed whatever is required for indirect reduction. So, that is not required. Okay, so, then I have just given a chart and then uh, then uh, total CO requirement and the total wood oxygen to be removed by indirect reduction okay, and then CO2 generated in kg mole. Then I have calculated the percentage CO utilization, what is the carbon consumption and the CO CO2 ratio all these things we have done. And, uh, so, you can find that uh, percentage CO utilization become maximum at 54 percent direct reduction and, uh, and for and it is 43 percent for 100 percent indirect reduction. You see for 100 percent indirect reduction it will be around 43 percent, 100 percent indirect reduction if I just carry out no direct reduction. So, then the efficiency will be 43 percent. So, this calculation I have shown and then if it is 100 percent direct reduction then obviously, CO utilization is 0 because 100 percent direct reduction means potent gas is only CO there is no CO2. And carbon consumption wise you can find that is for that is you can see 100 percent indirect reduction the carbon consumption is very high. This is the carbon consumption is quite high okay. and for 100 percent direct reduction your carbon consumption is this much and it is minimum for this condition the 54 percent direct and uh, 46 percent indirect reduction. So, this is you can see this calculation you can see in the form of a graph. Okay, this is in the form of a graph is there you can easily find from here you can easily see that uh, this is the reduction carbon and this is the percentage of indirect reduction is increasing. So, when 100 percent direct reduction carbon is around 321 kg and for 100 percent uh, indirect reduction the carbon is very high 747 what you have seen and it is minimum when the uh, indirect reduction is 46 percent. So, indirect reduction 46 indirect reduction is 46 percent here 46. So, direct reduction 54 and then you get the minimum carbon consumption this is very important. So, if we can optimize the direct and indirect reduction we can minimize the uh, carbon consumption and also utilization increases to the maximum. So, the CO utilization efficiency become maximum and carbon consumption minimum at an optimum percentage of direct reduction that is the 54 percent right. And uh, I am coming to another because we have just considered the CO, CO, FeO, C system. Now, FeO, A system whether is the what is the what about the hydrogen as a reductant in the blast furnace and you can see from this graph that is if you just compare this graph from carbon reaction this graph is little different. So, this is basically uh, F u plus C o forming F e plus C o 2 and then where F u plus H 2 plus F e plus H 2 curve is like this. So, you can find that with increase in temperature because the CO efficiency decreases for uh, for this reaction and in this reaction your CO efficiency increases that you can find with increase in temperature you can find percentage utilization of CO is basically increasing okay. and in this case it is decreasing because the curve is like this. Similarly, this curve both this curve are similar similar direction for Fe 3 O 4. Okay. Now, one more thing you can see that is the carbon this value if you just compare and you can see at 821 degree centigrade both the efficiency eta CO and eta H 2 are same, but at higher temperature you can find that eta H 2 is greater than eta CO here eta H 2 is greater than eta CO right. So, at higher temperature especially at 900 degree centigrade where majority of the indirect reduction take place basically Wistai reduction reduction take place at that point the hydrogen is more thermodynamically efficient compared to the CO gas 
right. So, this is very important. So, hydrogen is definitely a better reductant, but only thing is that hydrogen reaction you can find that it is a endothermic reaction, right. Otherwise, thermodynamically hydrogen is a better reductant than this. Now, we will conclude from this lecture what are there that is this thing. So, what we will conclude is that first is that oxygen potential as I said from the Ellingham diagram I show and there I showed you that Fe 2 O 3 that is the Fe 2 O 3 is the least stable and then Fe 3 O 4 and then Fe O and since the blast furnace is a counter current gas solid reactor basically Fe 2 O 3 you get reduced at the top part of the furnace and then Fe 3 O 4 and Fe is reduced at little lower in the furnace because where the reduction potential is sufficiently high because it is the most stable oxide among this iron oxide and his reduction is oxidation potential is also low. So, it is required a little higher reduction potential of the gas uh, for its reduction and so it take place little bit lower in the furnace. Second point I want to say there is the oxygen potential of the blast furnace gas I showed that is this fluctuates as it moves up. But beyond 800 degrees, beyond 900 degrees centigrade, this is the when the temperature falls below 900 degrees centigrade, then oxygen potential will basically rise up monotonically. Because then only the reduction reaction, indirect reduction take place and there is no CO generation. So, because below 900 there is no CO generation, only indirect reduction take place, CO2 is generated, right. So, is oxygen potential increases and it increases monotonically. But below 900 degree centigrade, as the blast furnace gas encountered the encountered the old layer, coke layer, alternately, um, its reduction potential decreases and increases, decreases and increases, it fluctuates. Right. So indirect reduction of oustite is very expensive in carbon, as I said. It is very expensive because because of uh, large amount of the CO that is required in equilibrium for oustite reduction, large amount around 70 percent. CO will be in equilibrium with the oustite. So, only is equalization is only 30 percent. So, indirect reduction is very uh, non-economic in carbon and then CO utilization become maximum that is 85, 6 percent and the carbon consumption become minimum that is 173 kg at 54 percent direct reduction in the blast furnace, 46 percent indirect reduction. If you can optimize in this way, you can get the maximum efficiency, but this is a conservative estimate a certain amount of carbon you have to burn in the blast furnace to meet the heat demand of the furnace because it is not only the material balance. So, heat demand is there in the furnace to for that you have to burn certain amount of the carbon, okay. certain amount of carbon has to burn to generate the heat. So, some amount of indirect reduction there you are just allowing and then whatever the rest of the oxygen you can remove by optimizing the direct and indirect reduction and that will be the most optimum condition. So, what I have said the 54 percent direct reduction is basically based on material balance only. If I consider the heat balance, it will be little that is the indirect reduction will be little more. Okay. Okay, thank you very much and the next class we will uh, discuss on the heat and material balance in the blast furnace. Thank you.